Okay, there we go. Here it comes. Do you want? No. I'm not going to tag you. All right, let's invite some people. Hello, it's time for 14 Arrows of Love. And I'm just inviting some of you to join us tonight. We got a special guest with us, George Hunter. We were out for Thai Tuesday, and he said, I want to do it with you tonight. Oh and I was God. a little, I'm a little scared, but he, <laughs> he was an educator. It is Valentine's Day, and it, Yes, and he was an educator. <clears throat> Oopsie. He was an educator for um, <laughs> IBM in the day. So here oh we are. Goodness. Yes. So we got Amy. Hey, Melody. She's laughing at us. I was Saw with your, your son, son today. today. <laughs> Yay. We didn't get pictures. I don't know what I was thinking. Annette, hello. Hey, Julie. So let's give George some hearts and some thumbs up. He's oh, never. Oh, gosh. <laughs> he's never I can't done this. wait. I'm getting oh. hearts and thumbs up. Oh. <laughs> So tonight Yay. we're talking about playing. <laughs> Amy oh loves God. when you come on live. There's Melody. She's giving you lots of love. Oh, hey, Joanna. Yeah. George, your favorite person's on the call tonight. Alan Dorch. Hey, Alan. <laughs> Why is Alan Dorch on there? <laughs> he sees your you. He sees you. Oh, my God. Hey, Nancy. This is a weird place. So we're talking Hello. about playing with mistakes, and I'm going to let George lead <laughs> off with that. Because this could be a big mistake. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so here we go. You were just telling me stuff that you've learned in the workplace. Oh, so share. yeah. You know, so this whole idea of playing with the mistakes is something that we've been using at Microsoft for quite a while. The idea behind it is um, Carol Dweck had a fantastic book called Mindset that she, you know, brought to Microsoft and it's led to a lot of the thought process going around a lot within the engineering teams, within the sales teams, within the cultures. And it's kind of this idea that you get away from, you know, having this pressure on the, the people that you work with or that you're overseeing. And you try to help them to fail fast and work on things and work on problems so that they can move, to, move beyond the failure in it and to find the real solution. And this has really done wonders for the organization. We have a couple of, of sayings. One is the fail fast, where you want to have those failures come up early in the process of where you're working or you're developing on, on things. And the other one is called crash and dash. So you crash and then you dash. But um, we love mistakes at Microsoft. If we're making mistakes, that no, that makes you feel as if you're going in the right direction and you're going to you know, ultimately get to the you know, end result that you want to. So we've had this in our culture now for at least the last five years and probably was there in some sex a long time before that. So, so when no you stranger. have this and you feel yeah. you have a failure come up and you have this, you have this big mistake that you do. Yeah. How does it make you feel? Hmm. Oh, he didn't hmm. know he would get the feeling <laughs> word. <laughs> How does it make you feel? So you have this, would you call it, crash and dash and you have this yeah what was it fail yeah well actually just a couple days ago i made a rather large mistake i go. made a i made a seven million dollar mistake in a <laughs> in some numbers <laughs> that i was crunching and uh, pulled in some wrong numbers for a particular situation i recognized the mistake the next day but um told all of the parties involved you know the mistake that was made and that you know, I figured out what it was and actually, un, you know, understanding that you make that mistake and where it came from is incredibly valuable. So how did you feel when you came upstairs, you were working downstairs <clears throat> when you realized, I remember this, when you realized that you made that mistake and tell me the feeling you had when you made that, when you realized that mistake. Right. Well, um, <laughs> actually this whole idea of Mindset is precipitated by the idea of a growth mindset. So we're all in various uh, okay, states. I'm, I'm getting to it. <laughs> you have to let me talk. <laughs> so anyway, I thanks for the thumbs up. There. <laughs> but um, you grow. You don't. You don't necessarily embrace everything all the time. You tend to grow into these behaviors, and you learn as you go. Um, that's what 
becoming part of this growth mindset is all about. Hold on. So actually, last night or two nights ago when I figured this out, I felt like I wanted to brush my teeth because I had just thrown up at this mistake that I had made and was so sick to my stomach. So I'm still growing in this process myself. Yeah, so you felt sick to your stomach. Yes. You felt nauseous. Yeah. You felt, did you felt woozy? You looked pale white when you were telling me. Um, yeah, it was a little disturbing. Yeah, okay, yeah. so it was disturbing and mm -hmm. all of that when you realized the mistake. Yes. Then you got your coat on and you put your scarf around your neck. You didn't really want to talk about it, which was fine. And you got into your car and tell me how you felt once you got into your car. What was happening in your heart, your mind, your body? What was going on? Um, just out of mind, a little bit out of mind. What do you mean by that? I don't necessarily know that I ever really... Um, <clears throat> felt comfortable with it for till about probably 15 minutes. Yeah, and was it because you were planning in your head? Yes. And what were you planning? <clears throat> planning out how to remediate the situation. Okay, mm -hmm. so how to fix the mistake? Not necessarily how to fix it, but um, I had already figured out how to find a better solution, so I was just figuring out how to explain and um, remediate it. Yeah. So, <laughs> remediated is a, like a totally head word, right? <laughs> I am working to get you coming from what, here. What is this? Is this an extension of my <laughs> Come head? Come on, give me some heart, you guys. Let's get George into his heart. <laughs> Go on, so remediating it, absolutely, finding the yes. solution for you. Right. And you had to be humble, let go of your ego. Oh, yeah, that's hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so... Because actually, I don't make mistakes, is the hard oh, part. Oh, yes. <laughs> did you hear that? Yeah. And that's how a lot of us feel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We often feel that way. Right. So, letting go of the ego to say, it's okay that <clears throat> I made this mistake. <clears throat> did you have to go through right. that process and say, it's okay to yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So, it's okay. It's okay. Now, what am I going to do? Now, what am I going to do? Right? right. And actually, there are some phenomenal teaching I got early in my life um, from all places. Dale Carnegie, yeah. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Great book. Talks about, you know, this concept of if you're worried about something, if you make a mistake, do you actually, you know, and this probably is not going to be necessarily one of the things that you would, you would teach in today's age, but you actually own the worst possible outcome Understand how that feels and internalize it. Realize it, that it's not actually all that bad. And then you can go on and develop a solution after that. So I've actually used that in my life, you know, since I was 22 years old. So interesting enough that the example that you just used goes right along with the steps in my book, My Six Master Steps. Well, of course. I you read your to book too. <laughs> I hope you read my book. So it goes right along with Own yeah. It. Mm-hmm. You had to voice it by telling them that you made the mistake. Mm -hmm. You had to write the solution. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Then you had to share it with the rest to make things happen. You had to yeah. understand living through this mm -hmm. and loving yourself through the process. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Look at the teamwork. Mm. <laughs> so how do you feel now after you... Let go of the ego, you found the solution, you've worked through it. Is that mistake gone forever? No. This mistake is going to linger for a little bit, actually. So, <laughs> Because there are some people within the organization that actually think that they're going to get $7 million more million in revenue than actually what they're going to get. And so there's still... Uh, there's a ripple effect that um, this has caused that I'm still remediating. So it'll go on for a little bit. And how do you f how do you work on the ebbs and flows of playing with that mistake? Meaning, how do you work through the feelings that may come up and the challenges that may come up from that mistake? Well, I've already owned it. So I'm kind of like, I already have you know, I'm kind of galvanized to it. So there's nothing anybody can really say that I haven't beat myself up about already. And so... So that leads right <clears throat> into what Amy and I are both thinking. Thank you, Amy. Exactly my thoughts of where I was going. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like two heart people. Oh, boy. But the teachings from 
um, Bob Stevens, Robert Tennyson Stevens with conscious language is to say, oops, I made a mistake. Oops, own it. The oops is owning it, mm -hmm. right? Oops. And then I recommit. I recommit to the solution. I recommit to own, you know, moving through this mistake and showing up in a different way. It's kind of cool, right? Oops, I recommit. Or is a nice way of looking at it. Hey, Barbara Held, thanks for joining us. Not hey, as big Laurie. a fan of the oops, but I get the point, yes. Yeah, well, because I get it. Yeah. What word would you use instead of oops? Well, I don't think you want to be that nonchalant about some of the mistakes. I, I want you to, to truly learn from them and and um, build a better solution. Um, to me, oops just seems a little bit um, trivializing of it. Yeah, but do you realize, George Hunter, that there's tons of people out there that beat themselves up to the point of that they can't, they have trouble getting to that place? Well, so trivialize, what'd you say? Tri trivializing. Trivializing it. The airs. As if you should. Sometimes we need to lighten the load. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? Because you know how you had a hard time saying how you feel about it? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like that, and they're up in their head so much that they cannot put a finger of how they feel on it. And what I want to point out is that mistake can linger inside you. He thinks it's all out here by his explanation. Yes? Like it's all out here. It's all something that can be dealt with. Mm -hmm. For someone like me, I feel it. And it might be stuck somewhere in my body if I don't name it, label it, and recommit to mm. that does not define me. That mistake does not define me. That mistake makes me grow. It's kind of like the caterpillar and the butterfly. Do you, The caterpillar ate all that stuff, ate it, ate it up, got into the cocoon. But it makes them a better person. Uh, it makes them into a beautiful butterfly, which all those mistakes that we eat and eat and eat up mm -hmm. makes us into something bigger and brighter. Very profound. <laughs> are you making fun of me? <laughs> no, I'm not. Because yes, you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. Because so. I'm used Hold to on. this. Hold he on. would call that <laughs> nuggets of nonsense. Is his favorite thing to call those no. little reflections of mine. No, honey, that's not a nugget of nonsense. It's profound because <laughs> all of those little things that they ate around are not mistakes at all. And that's exactly the point. The point. Yes. yes. The caterpillar is as beautiful as the blood butterfly. All you have to do is spread your wings and fly. That is one of my biggest quotes that I came up with teaching children's yoga for 12 years because here came these teenagers that felt that they were so wrong. They always felt wrong or ugly or whatever. And that wasn't it at all. They were just grabbing a hold of all the experiences right. of life so that they could be beautiful as a caterpillar and then fly as a butterfly. Right? We definitely need a nugget of nonsense icon though. On Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Was that nonsense? No. Oh, stop. Oh, you guys would have so much oh, fun with goodness. us. Susan, mm. never say I failed. The thing you did didn't work, but people don't fail. I'm trying to read it. It keeps moving. Our attempts at something may miss the mark or we may miss, uh, make a mistake, but we are not the point of failure. Our oh, ideas like it, or our actions well may done. be the oh i can't read the rest the something okay awesome susan thanks for sharing thanks for watching our <laughs> mizzou beat a m tonight my brother hal says oh very nice good <laughs> <laughs> in other words he's saying george just go watch the mizzou game <laughs> yeah. all right well thanks for joining us on our back and forth about playing with mistakes. It's absolutely true that there's no such thing as a mistake, although we label them constantly. And when we label them, I think it's nice to relieve them. And so this oil that I wanna share as a tool is called Relieve It. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice for after a workout, for your muscles and your body physically, but what I like to, I, what I realized in the last two weeks sharing it in some yoga classes, that people have forgotten about our beautiful blend, Relieve It. 
and it is a blend of spruce, black pepper, hyssop, and peppermint. And I love that hint of black pepper in there. Mm. Isn't it nice? Ah. Yeah. Oh. And I think of black mm. pepper as an essential oil that can just make change, positive change. And think about when you pepper your food. <laughs> when somebody asks you for black pepper, does it not make change to the food in front of you? Yeah. It does. It makes change. So that's what I think of. And this is high with spruce, black pepper, hyssop, and peppermint. So check out Relieve It if it you have it already. Oils too, wasn't well, it? it used to be the big companion with Panaway. Like we always oh, use right. Panaway and yeah. Relieve It layered on with each other. Mm -hmm. And then we got Deep Relief. It's Buddy, the Deep Relief roll on. And we got Deep Relief, and I feel like people have forgotten about Relieve It. Yeah. So it's one of my old school favorites. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention tonight. Don't forget about Relieve It. Yeah. And let's draw a love card, George. Are you oh, ready? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Look let's, what I deal with, my friends. Here we go. Amy, you asked for it. George is on the line. Here it is. <laughs> All right. So you get to pick the card. It is Valentine's it Day. Is, so well, tomorrow. Yeah. Knock. Knock on the card to clear it. Oh, this one, I'll go with that one. <laughs> no, just knock the card. You don't get to pick the first one. <laughs> we'll see Boobies. which one. Yeah, yes. stop. <laughs> you're on You're on live virtual. <laughs> you're virtual. She's got those naked girl playing cards. <laughs> oh, stop. These are angel cards. All right, okay. pick out of the pile. All righty. Think if I can find that one again. Oh, oh it's... yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to matters of the heart, there is no right or wrong. Every choice you make expands your understanding of life <gasps> and love. Oh my God, I am so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I nailed it again. Oh my gosh. So before we got on here, everything he was saying was about right or wrong. And I'm like, no, George, there's no right or wrong. We're not going to talk about right or wrong. He's a right or wrong person. I'm a just is, it just is person. So this is profound that he picked this card. Your Todd, your brother Todd, your cousin Todd is saying, cousin George is now Facebook famous. So here it is. Todd, gonna... you need more to do in Joplin than watch these. <laughs> when it comes to matters of the heart, there is no right or wrong. Every choice you make expands your understanding of life and love. All right, my friends, thanks for the fun. Thanks for joining me tonight, honey. Oh, am I done? <laughs> he wants Bye, to everyone. stay on. All right, he might be back tomorrow night. Who knows? No, no. <laughs> Ciao, everyone.